Hi, this is Nate Mayberry here at Bethesda PhysioCare, where today we're talking about a special topic, all about cervical instability and EDS. For those of you who don't know what EDS is, it stands for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Cervical instability is an under-recognized source of persistent neck pain and neurological symptoms in patients with connective tissue disorders, such as EDS. So let's first talk about what cervical instability actually is. When the ligaments of the cervical spine become excessively lax, they can no longer prevent the bones from being restrained and the joint becomes structurally unstable. In patients with EDS, the cranium and the top several cervical vertebrae are prone to becoming unstable, thus perpetually irritating the important neural structures they are supposed to be protecting. So why does cervical instability often go unrecognized by healthcare providers? To start, it requires specialized imaging to measure and diagnose. In a resting position laying down, it's virtually impossible to determine the full extent of cervical instability. In order to determine the laxity of cervical ligaments, Pictures closer to an end range and in weight bearing are warranted. If cranial cervical instability is suspected, this would mean the skull itself is moving on the top cervical vertebrae. This is most noticeable in flexion and extension motions. Typically, a flexion and extension MRI or radiograph is needed to see this movement. When the cranium is unstable, it can create a variety of autonomic and neurological symptoms, including extremity numbness, headaches, dizziness, difficulty swallowing, visual disturbances, impaired gait and lower extremity strength, and nausea. Other times the cranium can be stable, but the segments directly below it are unstable. When the first and second cervical vertebrae are unstable, that creates a rotational instability. Clinically, this would present as symptoms including headaches, dizziness, visual disturbances, pressure at the base of the skull, and blackouts with rota rotating one's head to end ranges. This is typically diagnosed using a rotational CT scan. In some cases, a neurosurgeon may prefer to use a digital motion x-ray to look at the above mentioned segments as well as the lower cervical vertebrae. Combining all the imaging with one's clinical symptoms will give the medical team the best available data to diagnose structural cervical instability. When the cervical spine is deemed too unstable to support the important neurological structures around it, it is often recommended to have a surgical fusion to correct the instability. In these cases, surgery with post-operative physical therapy have been shown to yield good results and improve symptoms. However, there are some cases that present with similar symptoms that do not demonstrate structural instability. In these cases, patients are considered to have a functional instability. The ligaments themselves are capable of protecting the vital nerves around them, but the brain and the system designed to control the head and neck are out of sync. The cervical spine is dependent on input from the vestibular system, which is your inner ear and is important for equilibrium, the oculomotor system, which is the coordination of your visual system and eyes, and the muscles of the head and neck. Many times these inputs can be impaired from trauma or injury. If they are not working in tandem, the output is distorted and often mimics symptoms very similar to cervical instability. The good news about functional instability is that it does not require surgery. It instead responds to appropriate physical therapy addressing sensory integration of all the above mentioned systems. This can include a variety of exercises and manual therapy techniques. Working with the trained physical therapy versed in this type of rehab is key to achieving a desirable outcome.